disgusting car I've ever touched. It is a freaking exciting day. Jay is here with the engine harness. Yes, it's just one piece of the puzzle, but it's a big freaking piece that I have been waiting for for quite some time. He just got done explaining the methods to all of his madness, but for all you guys who are not absolute wiring nerds, like I, I, I claim to be a little bit, but like Jay and some of these other, these peers that we have out there, this is a top tier motorsports level harness. This has all the tricks of the trade, all of the latest and greatest, the coolest boots, the best connectors, the best potting material, the best strategies, the sickest twists. Like this is how you build a motorsports harness. And Jay has absolutely been geeking out. He was like a kid coming in here. He fired in here like, let me, let me tell you all about this thing. It was, it was great. But Jay, you absolutely killed it. Give us a quick rundown sure. of what's going on because we have a lot of work to do because this harness is going in the car tonight. Tonight. Yeah, we do have a lot of work. So we're gonna try to keep it simple. Um, the Voodoo ECU is a badass ECU. It's got a lot of inputs and outputs. We wanted to make sure Matt had some inputs and outputs inside the ca cabin and also outside in the engine bay. So what we've done here is a full motorsports what level uh, mil spec harness. And um, this right here, this big bulkhead is his main bulkhead. It tees into this transition and then this basically all feeds the motor. So we've got injectors, uh, sorry, injectors and sensors and nitrous and uh, extra inputs and outputs right over here. Uh, his starter, we actually ran the starter uh, signal through the engine harness because the idea was let's pull the engine and just pull bulkheads off the firewall instead of having to pull um, a, a single wire. That's just extra work, right? So we're running everything as much as we can through the main engine harness. Then we have a separate coil harness, which uh, powers the IGN 1A coils. And these are the big Mac Daddy coils. These are not your regular stock LS3 one amp coils. These are big dogs, so they need big power. Yeah, so what we've done here is knowing that the engine was going to uh, rev like 9,000 plus, um, we wanted to strategically pair the coils or pair the power supplied to the coil. So instead of having all eight coils going to one single battery power, or even left bank, right bank going to its own single power. We're using four powers off the AMPDM. And so those four powers are going to support two coils each. And then um, given the firing order, I'm not gonna get into too much geek detail, but into, into the firing order, we're allowing these coils time to recharge between firing, uh, it, between its firing sequence. So instead of one, eight, seven, instead of firing one and eight, right off the bat, we're gonna do one in let's say six, okay? And what that's gonna do is give that single coil enough time, enough dwell time to recharge and then fire that second shot um, on, out to cylinder six. So based on my calculations, um, this wiring will support these coils and the engine up to 13,000 RPM, which is way beyond what this <laughs> is going to rev. But I wanted to make sure that that was there because in case we needed to crank up the dwell, um, we have the space to do that, right? So um, that's what kind of triggered the whole, like let's do an engine harness and then do a separate coil harness. Um, so we've got two main bulkheads, um, one for engine, one for coil, we'll call this the ignition harness. Um, what we have here is the ECU side. So this goes, all plugs into the Voodoo G5 ECU. We've done it for years. We like the uh, nitrous. I wonder, I wonder how many wiring nerd gurus are gonna be like, that. you guys use that freaking solid state relay? Right. Dude, let me tell you something about this NOS solid state relay. That's a bad son of a bitch right there. 1000 uh, Hertz PWM. It's been reliable. It's been working for our program for for years. Years, the like F14 decade. has that thing. Yeah, well over a decade. So <laughs> because of that, we decided, you know what, let's let's continue to run it. Yep. We know how it works. We trust tried and true. Let's keep using it. Um, so this is pretty simple. Um, we left this as flying lead because uh, this is where me and Robbie will connect. This is the interface where the AIM and the ECU will connect. So once Robbie comes back with his side of the harness, the chassis side, we'll connect uh, with him on that. Clean. And then uh, we've got, Matt's got the eight can lambdas. So we're going to run these left bank, right bank, um, and pretty straightforward. It's just uh, can high, can low, positive and negative. But we wanted to make sure that we wired it textbook correct. 
um, instead of just jamming all the can highs into one butt connector, we actually have it daisy chained properly so that we have the beginning of the network and the end of the network um, and a resistor at the end of the terminating resistor at the end of the network. And that way we're not going to run into random issues with O2s not communicating or sending data properly to um, the ECU. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I am so happy to have the opportunity to build it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, I don't do this day to day, but this makes me want to do it day to day. Like this. Program. Look how happy he is, guys. Look at his freaking smile. He loves this. He yeah, does. It was a ton of fun. But it's also awesome when you're working with great materials, right? Working with like the best ECU, working with great PDMs, and then also saying like, buy, we want the best connectors, we want the best plugs. It makes it nice. And there's a reason why everything is so flexible and so nice. It's, yeah, J not only did Jay do an amazing job, but he also did standard practice times 10, basically. I always try to. I think, you know, when building this car, Matt was telling me, you know, hey, we're going to run the Voodoo ECU. And I was like, you know, being that I'm responsible for the tune, um, I also want to be responsible for wiring the engine, right? So that way it's just easier for me to know I already know where all the inputs and outputs are. I already actually have built a, a map for this, a starting map for this <laughs> car, right? So as I'm creating the templates and the pinout diagrams, I'm also creating the base map uh, to light off the car, which is great because now it's just, I have it all in my head. I have it in Google Docs. I have printouts for Matt and the team so that when they need to diagnose, when they need to um, work on it, they have a reference to be able to work off that stuff, yeah. And that's the proper freaking way to do things. So I don't know where we're going to start. And we kind of talked about, should we remove the engine? Should we leave it in? Alec and I decided I think it's probably better. We're going to leave the engine in. We're going to fish it through, figure out where we're going to mount it, mark, work, mark where we're going to mount it. And then we'll either pull the engine to fix the harness to the engine or when it needs to come back out because it needs to go back to the engine dyno for a cam change. Anyways, we'll do it at that time. But now I just want to lay this thing on, appreciate it, and start drilling some freaking holes in the chassis. Let's go. Yeah. So I was thinking originally of it going like up against the firewall, basically behind the fuel line. Right. So I think maybe it like should in go this in, area? in front of it. Well, you want it to lean up against the firewall, right? Come bring it down. Yeah, that's the plan. I mean, right right between the head and the manifold there? Yeah. Where they meet up? Cross section on. All right. Okay. That is this here. Oh wait, that's the. That's it. I got. Oh shit, we got. Matt, can you come back? Yeah, you got. It. I need to go it. over this fuel line. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. I'm, I'm giving it slack. Can I get more length here, or? Yeah. Push the T. Yeah. Push the T towards Matt. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Pull in. I'm in between the math. Well, I don't know how you're going to get this. Yeah, I'm yeah, looking at it. So that is that the route that we're going to want to go, Alec? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Around the back? Okay. I'll probably push the T over a little bit more. Yeah, this is probably going to be like a plug in the manifold and then bolt it on. Yeah. You know, when we're going in and out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so That's nice. Grab the well, let's go down. This blue guy, this is the. Uh, intake air? Nope. Fuel pressure right there. Fuel pressure. Right. Oh, right here. Got yep. it. Okay. So you can kind of untangle The it. one that comes out of the T on its own, yep. right? Yep. Okay. Out of the T on its own, goes straight there. Yep. Perfect. Luckily, I can stand here. Yeah. <laughs> Inside of it. Right? Yeah, let's uh, let's just plug in the other can lambda. Let me hop down and try. Plug in the other can lambda just to make sure that we have that routing crossing from left to right. Yeah. Done. And then we can do the coil for this. So the plan would be though that you want to populate this here, not in the car. So this is like a temporary install just to check. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, we remove your seat and you got plenty of room. Yeah. Dude, I freaking love that. So you're saying these, which this is gonna go where? Cause this is how this lays, right? But you're going to go basically down here. Yep. So today, Alec and I have taken it upon ourselves to do all of the final things. So let's get you up to date. Alec trimmed this corner out for tire clearance. It fits freaking perfect. We are gluing on these the zip tie tab holders for these because I didn't want it to fall out. We were worried that when she's going 120 miles an hour, that might 
fall out. So we're gluing on our old, our own stuff. And we just put this thing on the boxes to do an alignment. We did an alignment before. It's a lot closer in ride height now. That was just a, we never touched, we never measured the camber. We never touched the camber. We never did anything in the back. I think it was just eyeballed in the back, right? It was just eyeballed. Yeah, just straight eyeballed in the back. We never did any camber. We put the shims that Cad Chris told us to put to get like half a degree or, or, or a quarter of a degree of negative camber, which is what we want. So let's see what we got here. 25 oh. freaking minutes, 20 freaking minutes. That's perfect. Look at that. Is it, yep, 20 minutes. So basically in minutes, if you think about it, for those of you guys who don't know, that's um, like a quarter of a degree. It's 60 minutes is one degree, and this is 20 minutes. So 30 minutes is half a degree. So you can do the math. It's, it's less than a half a degree, which is perfect. Um, that's what we were shooting for, 15, to 15 minutes to 20 minutes. We need a toe plate it. Set the toe, square it up on the lasers. This is our, our Wonder Aligner laser alignment machine. So this thing points to that front target up there and that'll tell us our squareness. And we use toe plates to know the total toe. Dude, we eyeball this thing pretty freaking good. It's pretty close. Yeah, it's within just a couple of minutes of that. So well, we'll set we, the toe. We definitely set the toe so it's gonna be easy to push. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> zero toe or whatever. We were just talking about how much toe. How much toe do you run? On that car, we run a lot of toe. Five eighths of an inch, three quarters of an inch even sometimes. On this thing, we probably don't want that much. We probably want like a quarter or an eighth or three sixteenths or something like that. So we're gonna do the alignment now and then be ready first thing in the morning for Robbie. We've been thrashing and loading trailers and trying to get, got it, get everything done so that the only thing that we need to do is drop the wiring on this and go to the freaking dyno. So we're planning on being at Grom Racing on Thursday. What do you got there, Captain? It is seven eighths, so I guess it wasn't. That's a lot, dude. Back that sucker off. All right, let's crank some tow out of this thing. Front camber caster done. It's about seven and a half degrees caster and six, just let five and a half degrees of camber. Very similar to what we run on the competition C6 stuff. Um, it was already really close, but when we were setting the alignment before, we didn't have the brakes bled, so I was kind of just holding the wheel. But it's this, this side was spot on. That side just needed a small adjustment, so pretty darn good. Here we go, laying the interior harness in. We got all the glue joints glued last night. Everything is shrunk and sealed. Robbie is finishing up the front, and we are laying in the interior. It's 3 a.m. I'm craming. Craming hard over here. Well, we're almost there. Wiring almost in. Front, good. Interior, good. Fuel system, good. Radiator, good. Final couple things. Uh, obviously, we're switching everything over to Deutsch connectors. So getting rid of the factory connector on the tire temp sensor. You do the tire temp sensor, the shock pot, and then I need to do a rear view camera extension. Robbie's probing some stuff and doing the final system checks. And we're going to be powering this thing up pretty soon. Oh, he's got his hands fully into that. I'm checking. Systems check. Gotta love it, that blind click. When you get that connector. Okay. That's good. Okay, so we're changing, changing the factory binder connector. This is what AIM usually uses. And putting all Deutsch connectors on here and shortening it so it's the right length, because check that out. How freaking nice is that? Oh, the... All right, let me get you guys up to speed. I've been configuring and wiring things, it's just configuring all keypads, this, that, all these things, buttons, you know, fuel pump, is that happy? Interior lights, we got Jay and Robbie, both on text, both on the laptop, did throttle body calibrations, like change APS things, had to remove some springs from here to get the drive-by-wire motor to work correctly. So I've been doing that. Lots of nerdy stuff that I just figured was not that interesting, but, we just turned the fuel pumps on. That's what it was running to check for fuel leaks. Uh, we have cram, cam sensor signal, crank sensor signal. Everything seems to be working. So we are literally moments away from lighting this thing off, I think. Um, I just added some fuel. 
Uh, this all kit and caboodle. So that was cool. We were trying to dial in the fuel level sending unit. I don't see that reacting, uh, which is what we we're in a group text for with that screen up there. Trying to get the fuel level sending unit dialed in. But yeah, I think we're damn near ready to fire this thing up. Like damn, very, very close. It's crazy. So I'm on with Robbie from AIM. We're calibrating fuel level sending unit. This is the first time, this is the second jug. First time seeing, uh, like, will it stop? I don't know. So it's going, Robbie. It's filling fast as hell. It is channel three. All right, that's that's basically been 12 freaking gallons now before you saw anything. You got a reading on the fuel sending unit. That thing feels fast, dude. Fast. Would have went up to 0. 0.3, okay. <laughs> okay, I think we're finally ready to fire. Uh, got some stuff going. Jay's got the link online. Don't really know what to think, but I'm just gonna give Alec the camera and do my thing, so. Fingers crossed. Nah, doesn't need the air filter. Okay. Sounded sick. Hey, that was that was like supercar. It, it turned on, bro. It was kind of quiet. It sounded kind of like a motorcycle, like a leader bike startup. That was fucking cool. Okay, here we go. Take number two. Sucker's quiet, man. It's rich as fuck right now. Super rich. No water. Check oil. Check for leaks. And wipe down the headers so that none of our fingerprints are on there. Should have done that before, but just got excited, so we do that now. chased, uh, rear cover leak fixed, uh, ran it through the gears, clutch and everything is happy. I think I'm gonna go drive it, put it around. It's not tuned by any means, but it can free rev. Uh, 6,000 RPM rev limiter on it or like something super, super low. Um, just gonna drive it and make sure it shifts and stops and that kind of stuff. Cause still has to go to the dyno, but yeah. Gonna just go put it around. Holy freaking moly. You gotta take it through the whoops though, yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, the Cause it's, it's when it's straight, you know? Wow, prowling, dude. Looks badass fucking rolling, finally, dude. Finally, bring it over. <laughs>